chronically compromised patients are of interest because it's been, been uh, recognized recently that these patients, specifically those with chronic kidney disease, actually have a disturbance in their microbiome, which goes some way to explaining why they're more, um, we should say, they the, the encounter C. diff more often. And if they have renal uh, complications, the outcomes of those infections are more complex. So the, the, uh, it, the increase in mortality is seen as the, the severity of the disease and, and increased uh, Charleston comorbidity index increases. So overall, patients with renal complications are at more risk of severe disease and more risk of mortality. So that's why we're interested in these patients. And this is a much larger subset that has been looked that has been previously looked at. All right, the microbiome is is recognised in in the GI tract as being the big player, but as we've become more sophisticated in our microbiome uh, techniques, we now appreciate that there's a microbiome in the kidney, in the renal system. There is one in the liver. And I was surprised to learn recently there is actually a microbiome in the brain, principally viruses, but there is still, and so there are, there are bugs in virtually every part of our body. So there is a communication system between the kidneys and the various um, molecules and metabolites that they produce, and those metabolites have an impact on the bowel, and that affects the bowel flora. And in fact, in chronic kidney disease, we see a decrease in what I call the friendly bugs. And those friendly bugs disappearing enable organisms like C. diff to get a foothold and cause disease. So it, the microbiome, excuse me, is an incredibly complex entity. And it ain't just in your bowel, it's everywhere. 